हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम यू ऑल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल ऑफ इंटीग्रेटेड पेस मैनेजमेंट इट इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टूल्स और मेथड्स और टेक्निक्स ऑफ आई पी एम फॉर द ऑर्गेनिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो लेट स्टार्ट वट इज मीन बाय बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल हियर सम ऑफ द डेफिनेशंस गिवन बाय द साइंटिस्ट इन दैट द फर्स्ट वन इज द डिस्ट्रक्शन रेगुलेशन और सपरेशन ऑफ अनडिजायरेबल इंसेक्ट्स अदर एनिमल्स और प्लांट्स बाय इंट्रोडक्शन इंकरेजमेंट और आर्टिफिशियल इंक्रीज ऑफ देयर नेचुरल एनिमीज इट मीन्स दैट द बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल इज नथिंग बट द इंकरेजमेंट और मेंटेन द कल्चर ऑफ द नेचुरल एनिमीज ऑफ द पेस्ट इन आवर एग्रो इकोसिस्टम एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस नेचुरल एनिमीज वी कैन मैनेज और कंट्रोल द डिफरेंट पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन इन आवर फील्ड ओके देन देर इज एवन डेफिनेशन इज ऑल्सो गिवन बाय द पॉल डिबैक इट इज द पायोनियर वर्कर इन द बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल द स्टडी एंड यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ पैरासिटाइड्स प्रिडाइटर्स एंड पैथोजेंस फॉर द रेगुलेशन ऑफ पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटीज देन आफ्टर दैट द वैन डेन बॉस इट आल मॉडिफाइड द टर्म सम हॉट एंड रेफर टू द अप्लाइड बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल एंड द नेचुरल बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल दे ही सेड दैट द अप्लाइड बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल इट नथिंग बट द मैन्युपुलेशन ऑफ नेचुरल एनिमीज बाय मैन टू कंट्रोल पेस्ट देन इन केस ऑफ नेचुरल बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल एज दैट द कंट्रोल दैट ऑकर्स विदाउट मैन इंटरवेंशन दिज आर दम ऑफ द डेफिनेशन गिवन बाय द साइंटिस्ट देन दिस इज दन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट साइंटिस्ट इट इज रिलेटेड टू द बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल दैट इज एच एस स्मीथ he was referred as the father of biological control and he also gave the term that is the biological control then the paul dipack it is nothing but the one of the pioneer pioneer worker in the biological control then here the paul dipack also give the one most important concept of the uh, insect pest management that is natural control he said that the natural control it means that the maintenance of more or less fluctuating population density of an organism with a certain definable upper and lower limits over a period of time by the action of biotic and abiotic environmental factors then the then question is that why the biological control is so important or most important today due to the continuous use of the insecticides that insecticides is impact on the environment as well as on the human health and all the soil which also called the soil pollution so uh, we have to reduce this uh, problems nowadays with the help of this by the use of this biological control techniques here these are the some of the points which is regarding to the why the biological control is very important or most important Uh, the biological control is very highly economical then a uh, selective with a no side effect because here we can use a different predators or natural enemies for the control of the pest population instead of the insecticides so there is no side effect of that natural enemies self propagating and self uh, pre perpetuating the these techniques then pest resistance to bca is virtually unknown then no harmful effect on humans livestock and other organisms then virtually permanent efficiency greater ability to search their prey then improve quality of produce and compatible with most of the ipm components or methods okay these are the some of the historic historical events or milestones which is uh, which has been happen in the biological control uh, here the first the first use of the red ants to control leaf eating insects on mandarin trees so these are the some of the ancient history of the biological control here we can also see here in a 1762 indian mine number uh, it is exported uh, uh, from india to mauritania to control the red locust okay then here this is the most important history and is nothing but the one of the classical example of the biological control in 1888 the vedalia beetle rhodolia cardinalis was brought from australia and introduced into the california for the control of cottony cushion scales on citrus and this is done by the scientists that is the uh, mr cv rile and the mr albert coville 
and it is nothing but the one of the well planned and successful classical biological control attempt made a uh, overview of the cottony cushion scale projects then after that in india 1898 a coccinellid beetle that is the australian ladybird beetle cryptolemus montessori was imported into india from australia and released against the coffee green scales even today it is very effective against the mealybug in south india this is the two most important classical examples uh, it is nothing but the one of the well planned and successful classical attempt of the biological control then here also the some of the historical events uh, happen in the uh, we can say that in a, a historical uh, milestone then here in 1911 the berliner described the bacillus thuringiensis as a causative agent of bacterial disease of the mendelian flower moth then in 1920 a parasites uh, aphelinus mali introduced from england into the india to control wooly aphid on apple that is also the one of the most important examples then uh, in a 1929 to 31 rhodolia cardinalis imported into the india from usa to control the cottony cushion scale on wattle trees so these are the some of the most uh, we can say that the <coughs> relevant example of the biological control or milestone then here some of the institute related to the biological control in that uh, if you see uh, related to only in uh, india or indian institute that is the cibc commonwealth institute of biological control established at bangalore in 1957 then after that Now, this cibc rename as a pdbc project directorate of biological control then after that in 2006 this pdbc again rename as a national bureau for agricultural important insects then after that now recently this nbaiii also called as nbair that is the national bureau of agricultural insect resources and is it is nothing but the one of the nodal agency of the india which uh, related to the biological control okay then here some of the approaches or the methods or the techniques we can use in biological control or for the successful of the biological control in that there are the three methods or techniques or approaches in biological control the first one is conservation of natural enemies we can how we can conserve the natural enemies in biological control action that preserve and increase the natural enemies by environmental manipulation that is example use of selective insecticides provide alternate host and refugia for natural enemies it means that create the favorable condition for natural enemies to increase their numbers Uh, it also refers to avoid use of those pest control measures that destroy natural enemies then it can be achieved by the use of selective insecticide which do not kill the natural enemies and development of resistant strain of parasite to pesticide for example endogramma of trichogramma species trichogramma it is one of the parasitoids and endogramma it is nothing but the one of the resistant uh, strain against endosulfan the preservation of inactive stages of the natural enemies these are the some of the points which is regarding to the how we can conserve the natural enemies in a biological control then second approach is that the importation or introduction of natural enemies uh, in that the natural enemies are introduced from other areas into the new locality mainly for to control the introduce introduce pest and for that purpose there are the some of the national and international institutes helps for finding the predators and parasitoids for the control of the insect pest population in that particular area then last and most important uh, methods and techniques of the biological control is that augmentation in that augmentation it includes the activities designed to increase the number of numbers or the effect of existing natural enemies uh, by the propagation or mass culture and the release of the natural enemies to increase its population it means that augmentation is nothing but the uh increase the number of the natural enemies by their mass culturing uh it may be two types in that the first one is inoculative release and inundative release what happen in inoculative release this type of release may be made as infrequently as once a year or season to reestablish a species of natural enemies 
the control is uh, expected from one progeny and the subsequent generation only and the most important is that this inoculative release of bioagent is best suited for the perennial ecosystem or perennial agro ecosystem then in case of inundative release it involves mass culture and release of natural enemies to suppress the pest population directly and then here the inundative release of bioagent is best suited for annual agro ecosystem these are the two different types of augmentation we can use in biological control for to increase the natural enemies or the population of the natural enemies in that particular agro system then here some of the classical biological control achu in india uh, here if you see the first one is a cochineal insects was introduced from brazil against the uh, here uh, carmen die producing the insect uh, we can control with the help of this cochineal insects then uh in 1982 three exotic natural enemies were introduced uh this is nothing but the one of the we can say that the weed controls then after that here uh this is also the classical biologic control i2 in india in 1988 the coccinellid predator it is mostly used uh, mostly uh, sorry introduced from thailand into india for the control of the different insect pest or sucking pest then uh, these are the some of the steps in a classic biological control these steps it is most important steps for the successful uh, attempt the biological control in the agro ecosystem or in that particular area in that evaluate the pest problem of that particular area then foreign explorations it means that foreign uh, predators we can introduce in that particular area the selection of the and that particular predators are parasitized for that particular pest then quarantine is also important the processing of that particular plant products or uh, of that of that predators and parasitoids then mass of propagation of that or mass culturing of that natural enemies or bioagents then field colonization or release or field release and next one is the evaluation of the impact of that natural enemies on that particular pest if you follow these steps in biologic control with the help of this in the last 100 years or in past 100 years 100 success we can achieve or we have been achieve then now the question is that in biological control which are the different natural enemies we can use in that the first and most important natural enemies is that predators this is the first one of the bioagents we can use in the biological control so what is remember predators the predators are the free living organisms or an animal that feeds upon the other animals or prey that are either smaller or weaker than itself and consume more than one individual during their life span it means that predator means are those natural enemies are those insect which directly attack on their prey or which directly consume their host or prey or target insects and it require more than one host to complete their life cycles then these are the some of the characteristics of predator it means that how the predator how the predator uh, should be it is a uh, very effective in the biologic control uh, the predator and a uh, immature predator will consume a number of prey in the process of completing the development to the adult stage it means that it require more than one host the predator is free living in all life stages except the eggs it means that both grubs sorry larva and the adult both are the feeding stages of this predators on that particular target host or their prey then the eggs are usually laid in the vicinity of the prey it means that the oe position of the uh, predators it is lay their eggs or uh, occurs uh, in the vicinity of the prey then upon Uh, hatching from the eggs predators nymphs or the larva actively seek out capture kill and the consume the prey many predators are carnivorous in both the immature and the adult stages but there are exception in cirripid fly it means that the feeding stages of the predators it is mostly larva and adult both but exception is only cirripid fly here in case of cirripid fly only larval stage is the feeding stage and adult are free living they attack on prey at a larval and adult stage then uh, 
and these are the some of the potential insect predators it is mostly used in biological control in that the first and most important insect order is that coleoptera and in that coleoptera order the coccinellid family having a number of coccinellid beetles and the beetles is act as a predators for different sucking pests and the uh, larva or eggs of the lepidopteran insects in that the cryptolemus montresori it is nothing but the one of the australian ladybird beetle and it is very effective against the all the species of the mealybugs and other species also important that all are uh, coccinellid beetle then here is also the coccinellid beetle which have a number of hosts all are we can say that the all the sucking pests near about then in case of odonata order the dragon fly and damsel fly is also one of the uh, predators for the caterpillars then mantid praying mantis it is also the one of the predator of grasshoppers and different caterpillars then in case of neuroptera order uh, these are the some of the uh, mostly used predators in biological control in that the micromus egorotus it is one of the effective uh, predators uh, for the you can say that the sugarcane oleophytes then uh, in hemiptera the mirid bug or redwood bug or pentatomid bug are all types of bugs it is feeding on the different insects then uh, here in case of lepidoptera the defy apidiora it is one of the most important uh, we can say that the predators it is feed on the uh, sugarcane uh, woolly aphid okay then the, in the diptera also having the some of the predators then this is the uh, field application dose of the various predators uh, with the help of this dose we can manage the different pest population in our field then second things in the biologic control is that uh, the parasitoids uh, so what is the parasitoids uh, an insects parasites of an arthropods that is parasitic in its immature stages killing the host in the process of development and adults are free living it means that here the parasitoids are those useful insects or those natural enemies uh, that is parasitic in its immature stages only it means that the feeding stage of parasitoids is only larva and adult is free living and they complete their life cycle on the uh, body of the host insect and finally kill them that is nothing but the parasitoids these are the some of the uh, characteristics or, uh, of ideal parasitoids we can use in the biological control because the parasitoids is the best suited for the biological control uh, the first one is adaptability uh, it means that the parasitoid it should be adapted to varied environmental conditions then it should be host specific then it should be multiply faster than their host it means that they have a short life cycle or uh, with a high fecundity and high female male ratio then a high host searching capacity easy rearing and mass multiplication in the laboratory disperse quickly in the locality and you should be free from the hyper parasitoids these are just some of the uh, characteristics of the ideal parasitoids then this table shows uh, this is nothing but the differentiating points between the true parasites parasitoids and predators here the true parasites it, it is not used in the biological control the parasitoids and the predators are mostly used in the biological control and in between the parasitoids and predators the parasitoids it mostly use so these are some of the differentiating points uh, the most important point is that the second point is feeding stage in case of feeding stage uh, the parasitoids uh, having only larval stages feeding stage and adult are free living and adult of parasitoids feeding on the nectars of the flowers then in case of predators the feeding stages are both larva and adult except seed feed fly the number of hosts needed only one host needed for to complete their life cycle <coughs> in case of parasitoids <coughs> but in case of predator more than one host is required then uh, if you see the <coughs> host specificity of the biology of the predator and parasitoids uh in case of parasitoids it is great host specific and in case of predator it is not so great because in case of predators the cannibalism is there and if you see the suitability for biology control the parasitoid is best suited and predator is suited and these are the some of the examples of the two parasites parasitoids and the predators 
two parasites means are those insects or those animals that require only one part of their body one part of the body of the host to complete their life cycle uh, here the this is nothing but the differentiating point between the predator and parasitoids uh, the second point is important here in case of predators the predators are very active and the parasitoids are very sluggish okay then uh, uh, in the fourth point the habitat is independent of its prey in case of predators but in case of parasitoids the habitat is same that of its host okay and the life cycle of the predator is longer than their host and the life cycle of the parasitoids is shorter than their host these are these are the some of the important differentiating points <clears throat> then uh this is the different types of parasitoids found in the environment uh so let us start which are the different types of parasitoids the first classification it is based on the development of site in the host it means that how the parasitoid is developed uh, on or inside the body of the insects based on this the parasitoids is classified into two categories ectoparasitoids and endoparasitoids what is ectoparasitoids and insects on and insect parasites which develops externally on its arthropods insects for example black on baby cornice on coconut black headed caterpillar it means that the black on baby cornice it is ectoparasitoids which the which uh, develops on the body of the uh, upper side of the body of the black headed caterpillar endoparasitoids means an insects parasites which develop within the body of its arthropods uh, for example the erivorous species okay uh, then the base on the stages of the host attacks the parasitoids are classified into uh, four, five to six type in that uh, the first one is the egg parasitoids and most of the, the most important things is that the most 90% of the parasites parasitoids it is comes under the hymenoptera order uh, then a base on the stages of the host attack and the first classification is the first category is egg parasitoids it means that Uh, the egg parasitoids it will be kill the target insect uh, in the egg stage only it means that the eggs of the target insects it is the nothing but the host of the egg parasitoids in that the trichogramma uh, it is one of the most important egg parasitoids and another is telonemus okay and these are the different host insects of that particular egg parasitoids then a uh, egg larval parasitoids it means that these parasitoids it attack on eggs and larval stage of the target insects or their prey the chilonema blackburni and capitosoma coelurri are the two important egg larval parasitoids and then next one is the larval parasitoids it attack only on a larva of their prey goniozoos nepenthetis Platygaster oryzae are the most important parasitoids or larval parasitoids used in the biology control against the uh, insect pest populations. Then uh, this also the larval parasitoids, black on baby cornis and black on hibatars, also effective against the different caterpillars. Then larval pupil in that Isotema javanensis is the pre-pupil parasitoids or larval pupil parasitoids of the top shoot borer of sugarcane. Then in case of pupil parasitoids, the this is the very effective pupil parasitoids against the larval stage of the lepidopteran insects then pupil in that pupil parasitoids these are also the some of the examples here uh, the in case of nimple and adult parasitoids the epiri canem melanoluca apelinus mali incarsia formosa are the most important nimple and adult parasitoids it is very effective against the sucking pest the epiri canem melanoluca it is very effective against the nimphal uh, nymphs of the we can say that the sugarcane pyrilla then aphelinus mali it is very effective against the apple woolly aphids incarsia formosa it is very effective against the white fly mealybug and scale insects okay then uh, then 10% of the parasitoids it is comes under the order of the diptera it means that it are these are the different flies here the tachnid flies are most important these are some of the species of the tachnid flies uh, which attacks on the diploid larval instars then third category is based on the host specificity according to this the parasitoids is classified uh, on 
in in the monophagous parasitoids, oligophagous parasitoids, and polyphagous parasitoids. In case of monophagous parasitoids, highly host specific attacking a single host species. Single host species uh, that is uh, for example here this is nothing but the one of the uh, Ferrazilla nepenthes or Gonyosus nepenthes on the uh, coconut black headed caterpillar. Then oligophagous parasitoids means attacking a group of related species of the insects. Then polyphagous parasitoids attack on a wide variety of the host insect. That is nothing but the one of the trichogramma is the best example of the polyphagous parasitoids. Then uh, fourth classification based on their host. Here primary parasitoids, secondary parasitoids and tertiary parasitoids. In that primary parasitoids, parasitoids parasitize in the paste and it is beneficial. Uh, nothing but the trichogramma species. And secondary parasitoids, it means that a parasitoids attacking another parasitoids. It is harmful. Okay. And then a tertiary parasitoid, it means that a parasitoid attacking secondary parasitoids. And near about all parasitoids whose host are parasitoids are called as hyperparasitoids or parasitoids of parasitoids. This is nothing but the classification based on the their host. The next classification based on the number of parasitoids developing from the single host insects. In that the solitary parasitoids and gregarious parasitoids. One progeny alone is capable for completing its development on in or on its host that is nothing but the solitary parasitoids. And Several progeny are capable of completing its development in or on single host that is nothing but the gregarious parasitoids and these are the some of the examples of these uh, classifications. Then here this some of the kinds of insect parasitism mainly three types simple parasitism, super parasitism and multi parasitism. In simple, par simple parasitism it is applied when there is a single attack of parasitoid in the host and uh, irrespective of the number of egg laid. Okay. For example, Goniosus nepenthetis. This super parasitism, it means that when many individuals of the same species of the parasitoids attack a single host, that is the super parasitism. Then what is multiple parasitism? It means that attack of different species of the parasitoids on a single host and it is not a beneficial for the biological control. Here the super parasitoids or uh, super parasitism it is most important uh, uh, usually in the biological control. Here this, uh, this is the field application of the different parasitoids with their and dose on against the different insects based populations. Then biological control of weeds. Here the some of the insects uh, it is used as a it is act as a weed killers. In that uh, the lantana seed fly, Mexican beetle and the leaf eating weevils are the three important weed killers uh, which attack on the different uh, which, which attack on the that particular weeds here this is the lantana seed fly agromyza lantini it attack on the lantana seed lantana camera weed the mexican beetle zygogamma bicolorata it attack on the it attack on the uh, we can say that the parthenium grass then leaf eating weevils that is nothing but the neochitina species it attack on the uh, the water hyacinth aquatic weeds and this the this some of the advantages and disadvantages of the biological control and this is all about the biological control of the integrated pest management it is nothing but the one of the important tools thank you